former President Donald Trump took a break from campaigning to focus on his legal issues. And Trump traveled to New York to defend his real estate empire from allegations of fraud. Anna Eliopoulos has a story. A defiant President Trump back in a New York courtroom, this time voluntarily, to hear opening statements in a civil fraud trial, accusing him, his two sons, and his company of inflating Trump's net worth to deceive banks to get better loans and insurance policies. They weren't defrauded. I've been defrauded. While Trump may disagree, last week the judge overseeing the case ruled the former president and his associates did defraud banks and insurers. This trial will determine the amount of damages owed. At stake, $250 million in penalties, as well as some of Trump's most prized real estate holdings, including Trump Tower. New York Attorney General Letitia James also wants to ban Trump and his associates from doing business in New York. The law is both powerful and fragile. And today in court, we will prove our case. Trump and his legal team maintain he did nothing wrong, alleging it doesn't matter what Trump put down in his financial statements because they have a disclaimer saying they shouldn't be trusted. Instead, they claim this case is politically motivated. This is nothing more than election interference. The trial is expected to last until December. Several witnesses could be called to testify, including Trump and his children. His legal team says the former president is ready if that should happen. He's going to take a stand and he's going to fight back like he always has. It's important to note this is not a criminal case. This is a civil lawsuit. So there is no possibility of jail time for the former president. Anna Eliopoulos, Fox 32 Chicago. And to talk more about the implications of this trial on Trump and his businesses, we are joined this afternoon by Professor Stephen Caliendo from North Central College. Professor Caliendo, thank you so much for joining us as always. I'm happy to be with you. Okay, so this is a civil trial, as uh, Anna mentioned in her piece, which means that jail time is not on the line here. Professor, what is at risk for Donald Trump? Well, I think as, as we mentioned in the piece, um, you know, there's certainly financial penalties at risk. Some of his real estate holdings may be at risk. Um, you might argue under ordinary circumstances that the Trump brand in some ways at risk. But but I, I, I will say I don't think he believes that. Um, I think he very much, uh, you, you know, he didn't have to show up today. And um, it, it was interesting, Natalie, you mentioned it on the lead in that he sort of took a break from the campaign trail. I'm not sure he did. I think this very much was the campaign trail today. This was this is part of the image that he's uh, um, portraying uh, to the American public. Yeah, we were going to ask about the implications on the campaign itself. Are you uh, implying basically that this invigorates his base and gets him riled up? It does, Anthony. But of course, that's never enough because it's not enough people to t take him to the nomination or certainly bring him back to the White House. Uh, but but it, it, it continues this narrative of victimization uh, that he has become so fond of. Um, and and uh, that his that his attorneys are also championing. Um, I don't think he thinks he can win, or his legal team doesn't believe he can win this particular case. Uh, they already lost last week on a major element of it. And, and quite frankly, if you think you're going to win, remember this isn't a jury trial. This is a bench trial. It means that the judge is going to determine the outcome. You don't show up late because you're outside talking to cameras and saying bad things about the judge if you're really hoping to win the case. So this is very much, this is as much political as it was legal today for sure. So the New York Attorney General filed charges to protect the people of New York in this case. And some are wondering what Trump's business dealings have to do with the public at all. Um, so can you speak to that? Yeah, that's an interesting element of the question. You know, one of the, the, the ruling last week was that um, the, the fraud charges harm banks. Right, that, that they gave him loans with particular interest rates or particular terms as a result of financial disclosure that he made uh, that vastly inflated the worth of, of his property. So that harms banks, right? Um, I think that what, what, what the, uh, the district attorney would say is that it hurts all the people in the city, all the people in the state, in fact, um, because it changes uh, other elements of banking and the financial, uh, uh, in the, in the financial atmosphere or the financial environment. Um, that's a hard thing to, to, to understand, and it's a harder thing to prove. Um, but so I think the focus is going to be on actual disclosure and the documents and whether or not there was any conspiracy uh, among uh, members of his family and others. All right, Professor Stephen Caliendo with North Central. Thank you, as always, for being here and uh, offering your perspective this afternoon. We appreciate I'm it. I'm happy to help. It's great to see you. Have a good day. Good to you see too. you, too.